Welcome to part 5 of the Beginner's Revit course. We'll be adding in the ceilings. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources as well as 4 hours of ad free content, you can feel free to head over to my website and check out the course. I'll see you there. We have all of our walls in. The next thing we can do is add in some ceilings. So to start creating the ceilings, we're going to have to go back to creating some new levels. This is so that we can create ceilings that are then constrained to levels. So I'm going to go back to an elevation view. I'm just going to click on the east elevation view that we've got up here. And now we can see we've got a ground floor. We've got a level one floor and a level two floor with their proper heights already in there. And then we've got the roof heights as well, but we don't have any ceiling heights. So what I'm going to do is hide away all of the roof levels. And then I'm going to go right click it, hide and view elements. Now we can see what we're going to going to be working with. To find out the heights of the ceilings, we're also again going to have to kind of guess off of the photos because we don't have elevation views. We don't have uh, pre-drawn up sections or anything like that giving us heights. And so we're going to have to take some guesses and it shouldn't be too hard to do. If we start with the front entrance, we can already see that we know the height of this roof here. This is actually the level two above and there is a soffit underneath that. If we go back into our Revit views, we can see, although we've just hidden them, if we go to a different elevation, we can see the heights of all of the other floors. In fact, if we go to the 3D view, that is this part here. So the ceiling in the photos is only just lower than that roof part, which is hanging here. And to find the, the height of that roof, or that, I guess, the floor above, what we can do is click on it, and it gives us the level that it's constrained to, and that is level two. Going back to our east elevation view, we can see that level two is 2,800 millimeters high. In that sense, if the ceiling is only just lower than that, then the level or the ground floor ceiling is more than likely 200 mils less than that. So I'm gonna say that the ground ceiling is 2,600 high. If we go back to here, we can go to the architecture tab, go to the datum section and find where it says level. Now we can add in a new level we're going to make sure this, this is the right way. I'm going to click on it from this side and bring it across. I'm going to rename this ground floor ceiling. We're going to rename that view because then it's going to create a ceiling plan for us. We're going to change this to 2600 and hit enter. So that's the ground floor done. Let's have a look at the next rooms. So then this is the room adjacent to the entrance, which is the games room. I'm going to guess this floor continues on from the entrance. I'm going to guess that's the same ceiling. So that is fine. The bathroom here looks a little bit lower, but that's because actually this is actually stepped up. If we look at the ground floor plan, this bathroom here, there's some steps that actually go up. And so this is probably 400 millimeters up from the ground floor but I think all of this ceiling for the ground floor is exactly the same. And we don't have any views inside of this bedroom, so we can just go ahead and assume that they are all 2600. Next, we can have a look at level one. If we have a look at the level one floor plan, what does that entail? That is all of this section across here. And I'm going to assume again that these are probably all the same ceiling heights. Let's have a look at some of the photos. This here is that main entrance so this is all through here that is very tall i'm guessing that cuts off about there and that's all goes up to the to the level two ceiling however this stuff along here the study we figured out before that that was probably 2400 as well this is what we were looking at earlier and we said that this was probably 600 mils high if you go 600 and then you got maybe 1200 1800 2400 but that's a pretty fair guess then some of the bedrooms i have a feeling that these ceilings all carry on throughout that entire level. And again, we don't have photos of this bedroom or this bathroom, so I'm going to go ahead and assume that all of this level is using that same height of 2400. So let's go back into the east uh, elevation view. And 2400 on top of level one is going to be, let's get the calculator out, 1400 plus 2400. So that's 3800. So we need a new level that is 3800 high. Go to the architecture tab, go to the datum section, click level, we're going to bring this out, we're going to rename this level one ceiling, we're going to rename that again, we're going to change the height of this to 3800, and now we've got a level for the level one ceiling. Lastly, we just need a level then again for the level two section, and to do that, 
we're going to have to have a look at these images again. This might be a little bit taller. It's also, again, kind of hard to tell, but this probably roughly I'd say it's 2400 and if we wanted to we could actually count these bricks because this ceiling is going to go across the entire living room and kitchen so I feel like that's our best bet we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 30, 31, 32 so 32 bricks high and what did we figure out earlier that a brick was what 90 mils high or 76 mils high I think we said 90 so we go 32 times 90 this ceiling is actually 2800 tall we're going to say it's 2880, we're gonna say 2800. So that is a little bit taller. Let's go back to our east elevation and we can try and find our level two, which is sitting there nicely. So I'm just gonna to go to the north elevation. We can see that level two is 2800 high. So if we go 2800 plus 2800, that is 5600. Let's create another level for the level two ceiling. Let's rename that. Yes, we wanna rename it. This is going to be 5600. Now that our levels are set up, we can actually start putting in the ceilings and it's really quite easy. Let's go ahead and go to the ground floor first, looking at the ground floor plan. If that's not open because you've accidentally closed it, like I just did then, you can go back to your project browser and open up your ground floor. I'm just gonna slide that back over to the start. Again, I'm going to turn off this underlay for the level above. We don't need to see that. And we're doing a ceiling for this space here. So let's go to the architecture tab and you can see that there is a ceiling button next to the, where the floor is, which we used earlier. If we click on that, you can see that there is a compound ceiling, which is plain as the type of ceiling. I'm going to assume this ceiling is just plasterboard, maybe being suspended, maybe just on a um, roof structure. I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to model in a ceiling at the right height and then all the services and the structure and stuff that's usually given to you by the structural engineer, by the services, consultants, all that stuff. So we don't need to worry about that. What I'm going to do is not have an automatic ceiling. We're going to have to sketch in the ceiling ourselves. So this is going to be placed on the ground floor, but we don't want the height offset from the ground floor. What we would prefer to do is use the levels we've just set up. And to do that, it's a bit difficult because it doesn't let us constrain to it. So we're gonna get out of this actually, and we're going to go to the ground floor ceiling plan that we've just created under floor plans. The first thing I'm going to do is check the phasing, make sure that this is set to existing rather than new construction. And now we're gonna change the underlay of this view to show the ground floor below it. Now we can start modeling in the ceiling. If we hit ceiling at the top here, we're going to not have an offset from the ground floor ceiling plan because then if we move the level it's going to move all our ceilings in this um, in our model instead of having to then change each ceiling height so that's the reason why we use levels instead of just using a height offset it's much easier much easier to work with in the long run as well and with uh, service consultants or structural engineers they can just change a level instead of changing every single ceiling so we're just going to change that to zero we're going to change the phase created to existing which we've already done and now we can sketch in our ceiling the ceiling is going to go on the inside of all the walls. It's not going to go to the outside. And this is just going to go all the way around. And we're going to actually go to where the stairs begin. Technically, we should probably do these individually. And I think that's the way I'm going to go. So then you're not cutting through walls. Otherwise, I'm just going to show you what this would look like if I did it all as just a single ceiling. Click the green tick when I'm ready. I want to be able to show you the ceiling, but obviously with all this other stuff in the way, I can't. So what I'm going to do is turn on a section box. I've got nothing selected. It's the view properties. Turning on a section box. If we apply that, there we go. There's a big section box. What this allows us to do is to drag in these little bits here, and then we'll be able to cut through the building. And we just rotated that accidentally. And I'll show you what I mean. If we cut this down to about there, now we can see what's happening. We've just created a ceiling in here. You can't currently see it because it's um, above the section box, but that's going to be going around all of this. And that means it's cutting through walls, which is not what would happen in real life. In real life, you'd have a ceiling going from one area then you have another ceiling here, another ceiling here, another ceiling here. We're going to go back to the ground floor ceiling. We're going to delete the ceiling we've just created. And you might be thinking, how do you select it? I'm going to hover over this and hit tab to cycle through everything. You can see that there's now a chain of walls or lines. If you click, click it again, you've got the floors. 
If you click it again, there you've got the ceilings. I'm just going to delete that. Another way to do this is to click on the ceiling panel and go automatically sketch in ceilings. Now what you can do is go to the ground floor plan if you want and you can automatically sketch these in and it's really easy. Sometimes it doesn't work though, as you can see, it's not going to let me place one there. I can place them everywhere else though and that's going to automatically create the ceilings. This is okay, but again, because it's not um, constrained to a level, it's going to be difficult to control the height of these ceilings. I'd have to adjust each ceiling's height. So instead, we're gonna to stick to sketching it, but that's always just an option if you wanna do it off of the ground floor plan, if you wanna do it quickly, maybe for a uni project or something. I'm going to go back to the ground floor ceiling plan, hit the ceiling button. I'm gonna sketch in a ceiling that's not offset because it's on the right height. And now we're going to just trace around each area. A little trick that you can do for this, I'm gonna hit escape. This button here allows you to pick lines. If we click on that, we can now select lines and it's going to just pick all of those lines for us. This can be good and this can be bad. As you can see, there's some that are extending super far, but if we wanna do something quickly, this is definitely gonna allow us to do that. Instead, I'm gonna just keep drawing them because I find that a lot easier. We can also see that this wall here doesn't quite line up with that wall and that's obviously going to be a problem. So we're going to have to adjust this wall here more than likely to line up with that wall. Now at the moment, because we're cutting through this view at I believe 2600, the ground floor ceiling plan, that's also cutting into the level two above. And we don't wanna see any of that, but we do wanna see the ground stuff below it. So to do that, we have to change the view range. The way this works is pretty much all you're doing is just adjusting where the cut plane is for the floor plan. So the top of the view, that can probably stay the same, but the cutting plane we want to be 2800 below or 2600 below what it currently is for the bottom of that this needs to be below the cutting plane so it's going to make this 5000 less and then this can be negative 10,000 it just needs to be below the bottom level so let's have a look and see if that does anything there we have it we can now see everything on the ground floor but then every time we make a ceiling on this ground floor ceiling plan then it's going to be applying it to the height of 2600. So it makes things a lot easier because you're, um, then when you move this level, it adjusts all of your ceilings. So again, I'm going to go to ceiling, just sketch these in, and I'm just going to go around where all the ceilings would be. Just like that. We can click OK, those are all fine. I'm gonna to go to my 3D view and see if this worked. I'm just going to hide some of these things so we can see below it. But as you can see, the ceiling is currently sitting inside of the floor slab. Those walls only go up 2,480 high, whereas this is 2,600 high. So in that case, that tells me that maybe the ceiling isn't 2,600 high. Maybe this is more like 2,400. In this case, I'm just gonna make the ceiling 2,400 high. So let's go in to the east elevation again, and we're gonna change this to 2400. And that's gonna change where the ceiling is located because that is constrained to that level. And now that sits nicely below the floor slab rather than being above it. Now, usually you would have quite a bit of distance between the ceiling and the floor slab above it to have room for services and stuff like that. In this case, I feel like the floor slab's not going to be 320 mils thick. It's probably more like 200. And so that would also give a bit more distance. And we can change all of the floor slab heights and um, thicknesses later. But for now, we're going to do the ceilings on the ground at 2400, and that should be fine. So now let's go back to the ground floor ceiling plan, and we're gonna put in some of these other ceilings too. By clicking on ceiling, we're going to go sketch ceiling. And this, you can't really see what's going on here, but I'm going to assume that that is where the the wall ends because it's roughly about the same as that. It's 230 mils thick. Let's go around this wall here. Then we can do this ceiling here as well. Let's have a look at how that looks. That looks pretty damn good. Then we just need a ceiling in here as well. That's all the ceilings done for those spaces. That should be enough height difference for people to get up the stairs. The ceiling sits below the floor slab. Let's bring that floor slab back in so we can see what that looks like. So there you can see, you've got the ceiling below the floor slab and that ceiling is all on ground floor now. There we have it. That's how we do the ceilings. 
let's also do it for level one. So let's go to the level one ceiling plan again. And what we want to do is make sure that all of this is set up again. We've got existing phasing because it's all existing. And then again, we want to change the view range so that we can see what's underneath it. I'm going to make sure we show the underlay showing ground, the view range. All we need to do is change the cut plane to be zero so that it's at the same as this level, which is the level one floor plan. So then we can see everything on level one. I'm going to change this to negative 5,000 again. I'm just going to hit tab twice to go down, make this 10,000 below that level. Click apply. Now we can see that this is all where the level one ceilings are going to go. And again, we can see that this slab slightly goes over that wall there, which is not what we want. We're going to just adjust that that floor. I should have said not slab. We're going to adjust that. And then we're also going to have to adjust this carpet to make sure that that lines up as well. And obviously there are some other things as well we might need to move around. At the moment, the level one ceiling is 2400 above level one. So that is fine. Let's just start modeling in this ceiling. If we sketch the ceiling in, we can just do a square above the study. And we're just going to double check all this. It's on the right level. It's existing. That's good. Let's create a few more of them. I'll hit enter to do the same command again. I'm going to sketch that in. But as you can see, these are a lot lower than what we had previously. The walls go up. So then there'll be a bit more space for services and stuff like that, which is how it should look. We are also going to need a ceiling for the hallway. Also going to do now just these bedrooms and then that should be it. Alrighty, so that's the end of those ceilings. Let's see if that's all looking nice. That's what we've just created and I'm very happy with that. So then all we need now is ceilings on level two. So obviously we're just going to go to the level two ceiling plan again and do the same stuff. We're going to make sure that the view range is correct and all of that good stuff. We're going to make sure the phasing is set to existing and really we don't need to change the view range because we can already see what we need to see. Green tick to finish that off. Let's have a look at the 3D view. That's quite nice and that is actually 2800 above as well because that was a little bit higher from what we counted here and this ceiling will also go over this part here. So let's just edit that again. We'll go back to the ceiling plan and this is where we need to show what's underneath it. So let's try and um, just change the base underlay, see if that works. There we go. Now we can see. So then this is actually going to need a new ceiling. We're not, not going to use the same one, but we're going to use the same level for it. So we're going to hit ceiling again, sketch in a new one. This can just be a rectangle again, coming from that corner to this corner. That should do the trick. If we have a look in 3D view, there we have it. And then this brings up the question of what happens in here and around here, because at the moment those walls don't go up as much as they should. As we don't have photos of this, my guess is that this wall would come across all the way and then there's a door in there and then this wall would come all the way up. So let's go ahead and change the levels of this at the moment. I believe that is just on level one. Yep, it's constrained to level one. The top constraint is level one roof. We're gonna change this to the level two roof. And that's gonna go up as much as we need it to. And then this is going to come across all the way. We're gonna to go to the level one floor plan. And we're just going to drag that. And then there's a door that goes in there. Not a door, I think there's just an opening. Maybe it slides even from what I remember when I was a kid. But um, yeah, there we go. That is the ceilings done. In the next lesson, we'll be introduced to using families by adding in windows, doors, and openings. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials, and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to head over to my website and check out the course. I'll see you there.